راغبا في كل علم نافع ينمو العلم ويتقدم بتقنياته ومجالاته ومعه نطور أدواتنا في تقديم العلم الشرعي أكاديمية زاد زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن والسنة الغراء شارحة له فهما لنا من ربنا وحيان بشرى لنا زاد أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم we praise is due to Allah alone we praise him and we seek his help whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one and whomsoever Allah leaves us say none can show him guidance may the greatest peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam my dear viewers my dear students welcome to the eighth hadith in the second level of the prophetic noble ahadith and today inshallah we will learn a hadith that is narrated by Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu an. And this hadith is a sound hadith which is collected by Imam Muslim in his sound collection. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu an narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, This world is sweet and green, and Allah will make you successive generations therein. And he will see what you do. So beware of this world and beware of women. For the first fitna among the children of Israel had to do with women. This hadith should not be taken out of context. It requires deep explanation because some people might take an apparent word or some words out of context and uh, they may misunderstand or think that the Prophet ﷺ is against women or the hadith is against women, which is not that at all. So let's learn a bit by bit of the hadith. First of all, the narrator, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu an, was one of the youngest uh, and the best companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. MashaAllah, he narrated a huge number of hadith from the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. He was described as a faqih, a person who comprehended the deen, uh, learned the ahkam of halal and haram to the extent that he was uh, given the title of mujtahid. He had the ability of deducing the ahkam from the references and in case that there is no uh, straightforward reference, he would make ijtihad to reach the solution. Uh, he attended with the Prophet Sallallahu the Battle of Khandaq and the following battles until the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, passed away. So when the Prophet Sallallahu says, in the dunya hulwatun khadirah, Indeed, the life of this world is sweet and green. So there are two descriptions here which the Prophet ﷺ described this life with. The world is sweet in taste and green in appearance. Very attractive, very glamorous, very attractive. And Allah will make you successive generations therein. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ مُسْتَخْلِفَكُمْ فِيهَا you know, there is an issue which is highly problematic where people mistakenly translate the word Khalifa as vicegerent. So when Allah says, Allah said to the angels, Inni ja'ilun fil ardi Khalifa, mistakenly some people will translate it that Allah said to the angels that I'm going to create a vicegerent on earth. Vicegerent. Allah doesn't need a representative. Allah doesn't need a vicegerent. But the word Khalifa here means generations succeeding other generations and so on until the end of life and that is the meaning of مُسْتَخْلِفَكُمْ فِيهَا not that he will make you representatives of Allah on earth or vicegerents of Allah on earth no مُسْتَخْلِفَكُمْ فِيهَا يعني Allah will make you successors to the generations who came before you and another generation will succeed you and so on until the day of judgment. What is the hikmah? What is the purpose? Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this whole scenario? He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in order to see who among you will obey him and who will disobey him. That is perfectly aligned with the 
uh, explanation of the ayah of Surah Al-Mulk when the Almighty Allah said, الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا The Almighty Allah created death and life and He brought us to this life in order to test us which one of us is best indeed who among us will obey and will obey with sincerity and fulfill the commandment of the Almighty and who will disregard that and based on that people will be either rewarded or punished depending on how they chose and how they use the free choice which Allah the Almighty granted the human beings and the jinn kind. So briefly the explanation of this hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa instructs us to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After describing how this life is all about and what this life is all about, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa informed us the purpose for which we are on earth generations after generations in order to be tested then Allah the Almighty will see who will obey him and who will disobey him in other words he already knows before he created us who will be obedient who will believe and who will disbelieve but in order to make it evident because Allah will not punish any person without actually committing a sin simply because Allah knew in the knowledge of the unseen that this person is going to be a disbeliever or a wicked or a disobedient. No, not before he makes it evident. So he creates him and he gives him the means of guidance. We, we've shown him, we have shown him the two paths, the guidance and misguidance. We asked him to follow this, the, the, the path of guidance and we warned him against the path of misguidance. Then it's your call. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it evident who deserves to enter Jannah and who deserves to be punished. May Allah protect us against that. So he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, beware of this world. This world is full of temptations. It doesn't mean that do not live in it. Uh, do not lead a normal life or, leave, uh, or lead an ascetic life. Just isolate yourself from people. No. But beware of the temptation, and there are many. Beware of the fit and the trials, the temptations of this world. Do what you were enjoined to do, and refrain from what Allah has forbidden you against. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Luqman, which is chapter number 31, verse number 33. So let not the worldly life delude you, and be not be deceived by about Allah by the deceiver which is uh, a shaitan فَلَا تَغُرَّنَّكُمْ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا وَلَا يَغُرَّنَّكُمْ بِاللَّهِ الْغَرُورِ So the hadith are simply explaining and elaborating on the divine instruction of the Quran. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned again against a specific fitna or trial that we experience in this life. And this is where many people go wrong and they misinterpret the hadith and misexplain the hadith when the Prophet ﷺ issued a warning about women. When the Prophet ﷺ said, avoid the fitna of women. For the first fitna trial among the children of Israel had to do with women. Does it mean that women are bad? Does it mean that as some religions perceive women as satans and are misleading? Do we believe in the original sin? We believe, do we believe that it was um, Hawa or Eve who misled Adam and convinced him to eat from the tree? None of that is true. Simply, the word fitna means when some people are attracted to do something and they may do it in a haram way. We human beings are created in a way that men in general, straight men like women and women like men. Allah created us this way so that he prescribed marriage so that we can maintain the human race and we find repose in our spouses and mercy, compassion as we explained before. Women are attractive, it is true. Allah commanded women to cover up and wear the hijab in order, in order not to be fitna for men. 
and Allah ordered men to lower their gaze in order not to be tried and tested with the beauty of women who are not lawful for them. That is the meaning of the fitna of women. And that is the meaning of wattaqu nisa. So avoid women in what sense? Avoid my mother, avoid my wife, avoid my sister, avoid my daughter, avoid the righteous women. No, it doesn't mean that. Avoid the trials of women. Avoid looking at the beauty of a woman who is not lawful for you. Your neighbor, open the window. Close your window. Lower your gaze. Stay away. Um, do not unnecessarily mix and mingle with women in the marketplace, at work. Do not sit next to a woman who is not lawful for you. Do not befriend a woman who is not a mahram for you. Do not go out and date a woman who is not lawful for you. Because as a result, you will end up in bed with her. You will end up committing adultery. That is the meaning of ittaqun nisa. And this is what happened when the children of Israel failed the test. And you find that very obvious in the commercials worldwide, especially in the western part. Commercials about tires for tractors, big trucks. You find women standing next to the tire with swimming suits. What do women have to do with the uh, tires of big tractors? It is something to attract people to look at women in the nude or in the swimming suit in order to imprint in their minds women and the tires. So when he wants to buy, he wants to buy something which is related to the temptation that he have seen. Anything doesn't have anything to do with women. They put women in it. So in the media, in the social media, in the movies, in Hollywood, it's a big fitna, big trial. This is what the Prophet ﷺ meant by warning us as Muslims against the trial of women. Otherwise in Islam, alhamdulillah, Allah the Almighty says, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ فَلَنُحِيَّنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبَةً وَلَنَجِزِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْرَهُمْ بِأَحْسَنِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Surah Al-Nahl, chapter number 16. Whoever does good, righteous deeds, while a male or a female, while a believer, Allah the Almighty says, we shall give them a goodly life in this life and reward them in the hereafter according to the best of what they used to do. What do we learn from this hadith quickly? Number one, the life of this world is nothing in comparison with the hereafter. It's a transient station. We work hard. We try to fulfill what Allah has commanded and abstain from what he has forbidden in order to pass it successfully to the hereafter where the ultimate gain and the ultimate success. Secondly, this hadith is a warning against being deceived by the trials in this life. Such as, and Nabi Wasallam said, among the things that I fear for you after I'm gone is what you will acquire of transient worldly gain and glamour. Yeah, enjoy it, but do not earn it unlawfully. Do not compete in its regard to the extent that you lie, you commit adultery, you kill each other uh, for it. Be moderate and earn it only from lawful means. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam shows us in this hadith how much he cares about his ummah by warning them against falling into temptations and into the fitan of this world. Number four, the greatest and the strongest of fitna or trials is the fitna of women, which I've explained earlier. What does it mean? It doesn't mean that women are bad or there is something wrong about them. It's simply how people fall in the trial of the lust for desires, desiring to be with a woman whom she's not lawful for him. Uh, committing the sexual desire in a haram fashion outside marriage relationship which is uh, a su which is such a great failure regarding the fitna of women may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to what is best may allah the almighty protect us against all the trials of life and death until next time 
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يا راغبا في كل علم نافع ينمو العلم ويتقدم بتقنياته ومجالاته ومعه نطور أدواتنا في تقديم العلم الشرعي أكاديمية زاد زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن والسنة الغراء شارحة له فهما لنا من ربنا وحيان بشرى لنا زاد أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان